I got that burnout still where it's like, oh man, this isn't working or too many competitors out there, you know, whatever it may be. It's like, yeah, should I still continue doing this? So good morning and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today I'm joined by Kyle Hebner, who is actually joining me from Pennsylvania. So it's afternoon for him this afternoon. Um, Kyle has has come to me through a very good friend of mine, Scott Rusnak, and he is the founder and visionary of HM Therapy Support Services. And I'll let you tell I'll let him tell you a bit more about that. But welcome, Kyle. Lovely to have you here. Yeah, thank you, Deborah, and thank you for the uh, invitation. Yeah, I, well, we've just been having a chat beforehand, obviously, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to to sharing some of your stories here with the listeners. So let's get started. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your business and, and perhaps give us a professional and personal best? Yeah, so the business is, uh, you know, like you stated, it's HM Systems, HM Therapy, and we provide pediatric therapy services. We help kiddos that have physical disabilities and emotional issues. And we have two business models with that. One is called early intervention. So that's for kiddos from the age of zero to three. And we service in their homes to help support not just little kids, but the families. And then the other uh, business model, we uh, provide school-based services. And that is pre-K through the grade of 12, 12th grade kiddos. And the uh, therapy uh, services includes physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, uh, psychology service, behavioral services, uh, and throughout the years, you know, that that's uh, booked up more. I'm an occupational therapist myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, my awesome wife, Alice, is uh, on the team. She uh, uh, made that move back in 2007, 2008. Uh, and yeah, we gradually built from there to add the additional uh, therapy services. Okay, so when was the business actually started? Because I, um, you know, I heard your story. You, you became an occupational yeah. therapist. When did you start your business? So the business started in two thousand five, and I uh, started as early intervention therapist, and it was just just me, uh, <laughs> traveling to different people's homes. Uh, I was doing that part time, and also working in schools for for the schools themselves at that time. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, I was asked through word of mouth. I was asked from one district, "Hey, Kyle, can you help out?" And so then I started working the schools and again, word of mouth, I didn't put too much into the marketing piece at that point in time. And uh, yeah, more and more schools started asking for services and uh, it kind of gradually built up from there. And I'm right in saying you've, you've got about 50 full-time employees now, is that right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And again, that, that grad, I always say it's a healthy, healthy growth. That, that gradual growth was not too too big of a boom. We're overwhelmed and uh, you know, hit off the seats. But uh, yeah, the healthy growth throughout the years, which is that nice gradual growth, and you know, every year uh, throughout, you know, since 2005, we've we've had uh, gross income uh, grow every year except for for one year, 20, 20, uh, 13 or 2014. And oh. just flat, it was pretty flat, flat out. And that, that had to do with a, well, actually a personal thing. It was an accident. Uh, I was in a motorcycle accident in, in uh, 2012. And uh, yeah, so it's 2013 where the income kind of flattened out, went down just a little bit. But uh, yeah, throughout, throughout the years, we had uh, healthy growth. Yeah. Fabulous. So personal and professional best, what are you most proud of in your personal life and your professional life? Oh, that's a tough one. Per, personally, so so blessed. You think about things. So blessed every day. But uh, uh, I guess a silly one. Uh, you know, I just turned fifty three. Just had a birthday. Yeah, yeah and, your birthday. So, uh, yeah, thank you. And yeah, I guess a, a piece to that is you know still able to to uh, physically stay so active. Yeah, you know, I love snowboarding, biking, mm-hmm. running, hiking, uh, and you know, just love still being able to be physically active and business. And, you know, like you said, we, we discussed pretty brief, briefly uh, before and yeah, my, my company was acquired uh, a few months ago. And so that, that's it. That's an, that's an easy one. You know, it goes, <laughs> goes really quick there in the business side. Uh, yeah. So the business was uh, purchased uh, a few months ago. Yeah, no, that's great news. And so that's an interesting one, isn't it? Was that always the plan or did that sort of come out of the business over time? 
Yeah, yeah, that, that's a really good question because, yeah, I, I don't know about most other people in business, but, you know, it's always ups and downs with the, you know, the challenges. Mm. And, yeah, you, you love what you do, but then, uh, and, you know, I've, done, I've been in the business for quite a few years, uh, starting in 2005, but, yeah, I know a few times throughout the years, you start, I, I got that burnout feel mm. where it's like, oh, man, this isn't working or you know, hiring or um, too many competitors out there, you know, whatever it may be, just like, yeah, should I still continue doing this? And you think, mm-hmm. yeah, maybe I should try to sell. So it, the thought came to mind uh, a few times throughout the years. And then, uh, it, yeah, it was kind of a, yeah, such an interesting time, especially with COVID, everything mm-hmm. else happening in 2020. So e- even with that, we had such a mix uh uh, well, I should say I had such a mix emotionally uh, going through that process because, yeah, we get hit with COVID, uh, uh, the world, which was not a uh, good thing and uh, mm-hmm. so many challenges for everyone. Uh, then September, you know, August, September of that year, I hired some amazing, amazing people for the admin and internal piece of the team. Uh, and so, yeah, we, we started picking up and that, that's when, uh, thinking of EOS, yeah, yes. that, that's when we got the, the uh, visionary, you know, visionary here, mine's always running and rolling. And thank God, uh, again, her name is uh, Trisha, uh, the uh, integrator. And sorry, I have to mess up this meeting, but I, I made up a name. I, I called her interrogator instead of integrator. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably both, right? <laughs> uh, e- EOS Scott, yeah, you, you love that too. You, you ran away with it. Yeah, uh, yeah the, the interrogator. And yeah, th- things were going, uh, man, things were going awesome. But yeah, we also were hit with, you know, everybody talked about 2020 being hit with the uh, pandemic. Mm-hmm. But the business side, 2021, you know, the first half of 2021 was just amazing. Mm. Second half, yeah, we really started feeling we were getting hit with uh, many challenges uh, uh, within the company. So that, that was one piece where it's like, yeah, is this the right? Is this the right time uh, to go uh, to move forward with this process? When I had uh, some people uh, asking me, you know, if if I was interested in, in moving forward with the selling. Mm. And, you know, starting the process, uh, discussion uh, of selling in 2021, we, uh, you know, I was thinking, yeah, you know what, this will be a learning experience. Mm-hmm. Probably will not sell, probably will not move forward, but it'll be a, a learning experience. But uh, yeah, we ended up moving forward with the, with the uh, deal. And that's yeah, excellent. Um, glad we did. Yeah. And I can imagine as the visionary, you're probably already thinking about the next idea and what's next, right? <laughs> I, I am. I am. <laughs> <laughs> not to say that you're not, you know, that you're still there in the current <laughs> business, but I, I know how visionaries' minds work. And that was really interesting. We, we had a bit of a chat, didn't we, before we came on board about the fact that one of the things that you really liked about EOS was suddenly this discovery of this visionary and integrator piece. And so this is something you'd not heard of before, before you came across EOS? Not, not, not to that extent, mm. you know, where it's like, you know, throughout the years, you know, I add up here. Yeah. I need to hire here. I need to hire here. I need to hire here. I need to take off some hats. Uh, but yeah, you know, until uh, Scott came on with EOS, you know, it was, yeah, we get your visionary is where your mindset, you need somebody here uh, as the I- integrator. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't quite get it at the time. I was like, yeah, that, that sounds, that sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll take ass off. Heck yeah, I'll take ass off. But uh, yeah, we, we, we started uh, going that route and is yeah, speaking of hats. Yeah. I was like, Hey, cool. I get to take this hat off. Oh, nice. I can take this hat off. And yeah, it's, it's uh, I, I feel it's such an important piece to, to uh, any business owner. Mm-hmm. And, and like I, I think you may have said earlier where you know, as a business owner we feel kind of 
loss or alone. Uh, in, in many, many cases, I know I felt that way many times throughout the years uh, because those people have no, no idea what's going on uh, with the business and what, what we're dealing with and some of the challenges we have. But um, yeah, adding the integrator, yeah, that's, it's like miracle piece <laughs> happening there. Where, yeah. And, and again, the, the right person, you know, the right mm-hmm. people in the right seat, you get that integrator and it is someone that, uh, you know, has that, you would better explain it to me, but just that specialty mindset of, you know, overall operations and, you know, kind of taking that, taking that charge. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's huge. So tell me, because uh, Trisha is your integrator, is that right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Sets. So Sad to say, I miss our meetings and everything. She <laughs> was our integrator. Oh, of course, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, did did how did you find her? Because she wasn't in the business, was she? You brought her in from externally, is that right? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that that is correct. I, I hesitated there a little bit. We we had, and like I said earlier, we fall summer 2020, 2020. Uh, yeah, we had uh, three, four, four amazing hires uh, at that time frame, and all internally. So we're we're always hiring uh, service members, therapists to uh, uh, work business. But they, she, she was a. Uh, I worked with her uh, early two thousands in the school district, oh. and another person, her name is Julie. I worked with her school district around that same time frame, San Diego uh, city schools. And um, yeah, we haven't connected in a while, but I got Julie on the team. I pulled her from another big company and that, that was, she's a rock star. And then uh, I guess she was communicating with Trisha and I would say, yeah, I I knew the company Trisha was with a a telehealth uh, company, a huge company. And I said, yeah, she, she has a good position. She's going to stay there. Uh, thank God for Julie. She connected with her. And yeah, we were able to get, then get her on the team. And yeah, Trisha ended up be, becoming uh, HM, my company, HM, HM yep. Therapy uh, Integrator or Interrogator. <laughs> and tell me a little bit about that relationship, because I suppose for some people, this might be quite a novel concept is this whole visionary integrated thing. So tell me a little bit about what, what, what was that relationship like for you and how did it help you as a visionary to have that person as your right-hand person? Yeah. And Scott, and you know, that Scott was my EOS uh, Implementer. Uh, uh, coach. Yeah. Yep. And yeah, he, he was, I guess he was key piece in that because he was helping direct or guide uh, positions mm-hmm. is I, I don't know about other people out there, but yeah, you, you as a business owner and in the hats were so many hats and it's like, oh, no, I can't, can't get rid of this. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to train someone or uh, I'm, I'm the only person that knows about this. I better keep this. Oh, I better keep it. So you, you kind of feel like you need to hold on to everything. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it was, was a good gradual process and where, you know, Scott, you know, we pinpoint different things out, uh, whether it be, uh, you know, marketing or staffing, uh, sales, uh, relationships with uh, some of the contracts. Uh, yeah, just, she was taking on some of those areas and like, oh, sweet. Yeah, she's got it. She kicks <laughs> butt at it. And yeah, good, good to go. So, yeah, I, I guess I don't have any uh, magic. Like, yeah, we did this, these specific things, but it was just that good, gradual uh, process to where yeah, she took this, these uh, tasks or this piece of the business, and then she took another piece of the business, uh, and then kind of you know went, went on from there to where yeah, it freed me uh, up a lot to then be able to focus on other areas of the business. Nice. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, absolutely it does. I, mean, I think that's what EOS is all about, giving some structure that can help you to take things forward and the time to to focus on the things that you're really good at. So you, we, we talked again at, at the beginning, um, one of the things you said you loved about EOS was the level 10 meetings. Um, and 
as a visionary, meetings usually aren't high on our list of things that we love, are they? So <laughs> tell me a little bit about your, your journey with EOS and, and the, these level 10 meetings and what they did for you. Yeah, you know, like, like you brought up earlier too, uh, I, I actually, I missed those, those meetings you know, or, <laughs> yeah, because we had such an awesome team, you know, mm-hmm. called Dream Team. I had such an awesome team. So I, I truly actually do miss, miss those meetings. But uh, sorry, I got off, off track there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so with, sorry, what, what was your question again? <laughs> well, so you said it was one of the things that you actually loved. I say normally visionaries yeah. are not very fond of meetings, but with you know, EOS has yeah. this thing called a level 10 meeting, it gets brought in just for those who don't know. It's always the same day, same time, same agenda, starts on time, ends on time. And people go, How can you have a meeting every week that is exactly the same agenda? Yeah, that can't work. And yet every client I've ever worked with starts implementing it and then goes, This is the best tool ever. So I'm just wanting to hear your experience of that. Yeah, yeah, so so true because, uh, you know, we would have consistent meetings mm-hmm. prior to EOS, and yeah, we we had a somewhat organized. Uh, I'm a little bit OCD, but uh, yeah, the, the awesome person was in charge of that. Yeah, she'd make up a good sheet, but it'd be this list, and we probably well, and you can see me, I get off topic fairly easy, <laughs> but yeah, we 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 get off topic and. Oh crap! Two hours in this meeting, we have this huge list uh, on our, our bunch of bullet points we're supposed to uh, discuss and and get on. And yeah, then then going into the level ten uh, setup, uh, the way EOS sets it up, it's like yeah, do you know five five minutes intro and just like we did here at the beginning with you know the the good things that are happening, business personal, uh, but yeah, just uh, very, very uh, organized in that sense. So you have five minutes here, five minutes there, 30 minutes uh, with the deeper discussions, et cetera. And yeah, just that, that organization, especially with the, uh, you know, the scorecard mm. and, you know, and tracking, tracking the goal type areas. I mean, that, that's huge too. And just keeping that, uh, keeping that accountability uh, for, for all of us, including myself, but all, all the staff. Uh, I think that was just a key piece and, and different as compared to how we were, how we were uh, operating or functioning before. Yeah. I mean, it's a key part of the level 10 meeting is those scorecard, those rocks. How are we doing? You know, are we on track? Are we off track? And I think that, again, people say, well, you know, we're looking at the numbers every week. Do we need to? But it's really invaluable, I feel, in terms of you can very quickly see where things are working or not working. And it gives you a chance to get on top of it before it gets out of control. Yeah. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm really intrigued because I know that, you, know, you had Scott as your implementer, which I'm very envious of, by the way, because I love Scott. He's been an amazing um, influence on my life as well. But why, why EOS? Like, why did you suddenly decide that you needed something like EOS? Yeah, you know what? I, uh, yeah, I had I had uh, coach, you know, previously uh, yeah, through some other companies and uh, worked through SBA and that's a uh, that's a federal kind of thing here in the states, uh, mm-hmm. small small business association. Uh, yeah. And you know they they had you know really good uh, course you know like leadership course and you know pretty pretty intense. Like, you know, I learned a lot from that. And then yeah, I did have a coach, and, uh, and no no complaints. Uh, coach, yeah, you know, just uh, you know we, we got to where I guess we need to be. And you know, I was mm-hmm. feeling like, yes, we're not moving forward. And, and again, yeah, I, I forget exactly if it was just researching on the web or if someone told me about it, but uh, EOS, uh, once, once I saw that name out there, yeah, I started researching it and, you know, a nice person within the company and then connected me with Scott. And yeah, that, that was a uh, January or well, we connected in 2021. I'm sorry, 2020. And then January or February 2021, uh, we had our uh, first team uh, meetings. Yeah. Excellent. And so so what was it that, you know, appealed? Because if you're already working with a coach, what was it that appealed to you about EOS? Why did you decide to, to make that switch? You know, I think, and not, not just EOS, but I think Scott 
also the implementer uh i think just some of the discussions i had with him helped move that forward yeah yeah so i, I got to hear some of his business background where uh you know he he had some technology uh specifically for uh in the educational system mm -hmm. uh, that's which right. uh, relates a little bit and yeah just a few of the discussions i had with him i was like yeah i think uh i think this could be a good fit mm. and what do you think has been the sort of biggest um learning if you like through working with scott over that time biggest learning piece that's a good question um uh, I'd probably have to. I probably have to go back to the whole visionary integrator yeah. piece, and just yeah, implementing that that whole process. And I uh, feel well, it's you know such a key piece. And I, and I think uh, you know I've I've worked with a number of businesses over the years now through EOS, and I think that when you, when a, a real visionary sees that there is this seat that they can have where they can actually do the stuff they love and get rid of let go of all the other stuff that they don't enjoy it's sort of a huge weight off their shoulders in some respects now it doesn't mean that letting go is easy because we all know that we're a bit of a control freak as well as a um as entrepreneurs but once you can get the right people in the right seats and let go suddenly you, your life gets back to doing the stuff that you really are passionate about and that you can enjoy and you have somebody who's there by your side to kind of help you through it and that's that whole visionary integrated piece really isn't it it, it is it is. And that's, yeah, that's what uh, Scott, that's what he was always uh, pushing for too. Yeah. But, yeah. Kyle, can you hand this off? Scott, no, I can't yet. I can't do it yet. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, just, just that yeah, push to you know, gradually, you know, get, you know, again, take the hats off, get things yeah. off the plate. Uh, so you are able to gradually, you know, focus on what you want to uh, focus on as a business owner. Mm. But you have to have the right people in the right seats, don't you? I mean, you you, it, you can only yeah. really let go when you've got those right people in the right seats doing the right thing. Yeah, exactly. And then I, I feel it's probably, you know, when I was bringing up you know, challenges, uh, I feel that's probably the biggest challenge uh, is with us as a whole, the whole company is just hiring mm. and yeah, getting the right people in the right seats and get, getting people. <laughs> uh, overall, I think most businesses are having issues with that throughout the past two or so years. Mm -hmm. So how do you make sure you get the right people? What's, what's your method at HM yeah. to get the right people? You know what? Yeah, I wish I had yeah, a nice, clear answer. Like step one, step two, step three. But I, I would say that I guess my thought on that is just yeah, with, with the hiring process, put the time into it because we, we all know how much it costs to hire someone yeah, and how much it costs then to need to discontinue or fire someone, you know, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. fire someone and then, you know, go back to the starting point again. So I feel just taking that, taking that time in multiple interviews or multiple interview process before hiring. Yeah. Uh, to get that feeling, will that work every time? Definitely not, not every time, but uh, I feel that yeah, if you go, you know, through the process and uh, let's say more, not difficult, but uh, for, for the uh, new hire, more of a challenging hiring process mm -hmm. where it's like, oh, I didn't get the job yet. Okay, meet with them, do this, this, this. Uh, yeah, I feel that is probably one key piece yeah. to uh, that process. And you're testing for the core values throughout that process, aren't you? Because it's all very, um, yeah, exactly. CVs are fantastic. Um, and you can say whatever you like in a CV, but by doing those multiple interviews, you're actually trying to see if that person shares your core values, do they fit in with the organization? Um, exactly. Yeah. 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 And, and you know, build, building that relationship and, and uh, even before they're hired again, yeah, it's, not possible to really know no mm -hmm. person, but uh, yeah, just getting to uh, the, the maximum possible point and yeah, seeing you know, if they do fit in uh, with your values. Sure. See, it's been it's been a few months 
already. Yes, yeah, since I since I sold it and went through the uh, transition process. Yes, you know, <laughs> the values. I'm like, ding, 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 ding. I, I forgot. <laughs> Like a, <laughs> I can see we're already thinking about the next venture, which is all really cool. Hey, um, I, I got I want to finish up because we've got we're running out of time, but I would love you to give me sort of three top tips or tools that you've because you you know as you said this this journey it's not a smooth journey, right? There's ups and downs. That it's um it's fantastic when you get there and you can either sell or or go into the role that you really want to do. But what would be the three things that you could share with people listening that they could actually use in their business? Mm. You know what? Uh, I guess you know, one thing I think of is just always remember why you do what you do. Yeah. What what got you into the business that you do? And just try, you know, try to keep that passion alive, try to keep that drive and passion alive. Uh, again, yeah, I, I know that's not easy. I know I, I've lost, you know, mine uh, quite a few times throughout I me. Mean, because back once once you realize uh, once you get out of that little pit and yeah. back into yeah I love this I do this come on we got to go uh, yeah I think that's that's one thing and you know I guess this, this kind of goes with it as well but yeah just always try try not to take money as your priority or try not to prioritize the income or the money to make money, 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 Mm -hmm. and just keep that. Okay. What, what do you love about what you do? And people see that, you know, it comes out of you, you know, that that, the joy and the the, the passion you have for whatever it is that you do, Mm -hmm. Uh, whether you do what what I do and help, help kids, pediatrics, whether you're a mechanic, where you're construct, whatever you do, and you show that passion. It's like, Oh, yeah, I want to use this company. I want to use that person. Yeah. Um, uh, I feel the, uh, you know, financially, yeah, of course, we all, we all need to survive hmm. financially and we sure. want to thrive financially. And I feel, you know, having, having that, uh, you say, po- positive attitude, just loving what you do. I think that leads into thriving financially, if that makes sense. Perfect sense to uh, me. Yep. <laughs> and... Oh, I know it's probably it's probably kind of still it from you, but uh, I would say yeah, we never stop learning. Yeah, and I know yeah, that's a big key. I heard you say that, and um, yeah, I always s- slow down and always listen to you know the people around you and think of business, listening to your staff, asking them questions instead of you know, us just blabbing away and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, sit down, relax, listen to what they're saying, because we also learn so much from our, our staff, and our team. And that, that leads into uh, helping us with decision making as well. Uh, I kind of went out there, but yeah, never stop learning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And no, it's actually, um, it's one of my things. I actually have a little tattoo that is a, it's a Chinese symbol. And it basically says that, yeah, I'm um, sometimes a mentor, but always a student. And that is my uh, mantra in life because, you know, we, we always learning. Yeah. Oh, uh, very, very cool. Yeah. De- thank you. De- 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 were we able to see the tattoo? No, no. <laughs> a number of reasons. First of all, it's in a very private place, but secondly, it's actually in, it's in white ink. So it's actually um, more like a watermark on a piece of paper than it is sort of a, a really obvious tattoo. But yeah, it's, it's just something to keep uh, reminding me. <laughs> no, that's super cool. Yeah, of course, I had, I had, I had to ask you awkward yeah. <laughs> questions. Oh, that's great. Like, now, my, now my listeners know a little bit more about me than I th- they thought they were going to. <laughs> it's all I good. It. Hey, look, um, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. A couple of things. Um, if they wanted to get hold of the HN Therapy Support, what is your website? How do we get hold of you there? Yeah, and you know what? Uh, yeah, being we, we sold it, uh, yeah. you know, the website, and of course, website site's still out there. Yep. I'm still, yeah, I want to see the company bought me. It's called Stepping Stones Group. I want to mm-hmm. see success. Yeah. Yeah, I, I plan on uh, when I know all my staff are in a good place. Yeah, I plan on really cutting down the hour. So I'm back to being a visionary. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't want to, uh, you know, completely step out because, yeah, this is my company in, in with uh, this much larger yep. organization. I, I want to see them succeed. Um, 
And so my, my email, and it still goes into their company email system now, but it's kyle at hmsystems.inc.com. You know, I forgot our kyle at hmsystemsinc.com. Beautiful. Yeah, I lo- love to, uh, anybody has any questions or suggestions, yeah. you'd be able to hear from people. And I'm, 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 I'm personally, I'm really looking forward to seeing what's coming next. I know that you're not going to be not quite ready for that yet, but I just know um, that, you know, as a visionary, there's going to be a million things going around in that brain of yours. And I can't wait to see what you actually do next. But hey, from, from my point of view, congratulations on everything that you've achieved. Um, you know, well done on building up the business, on the sale, um, on, on learning, you know, about your journey as a visionary. Um, yeah, congratulations. Yeah, thank you so much, Deborah. And yeah, thank, thank you for having me. Uh, on your awesome show and uh yeah maybe i'll get invited again once i start my next venture <laughs> i'm looking definitely you're on my list now that you're never going to escape <laughs> <That's brilliant. laughs> hey well look thank you so much i'm going to leave you to enjoy the rest of your week um but yeah thank you for your time and, and i'll um i'll look forward to yeah following you with interest all right thank you deborah take thank care you. you too